All right. Welcome, everyone. Happy New Moon. I'm Brian Hemmer with the Inevitable You here with my co-host, the magical Isabella Sumner. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Brian? Doing awesome. Excited for another fun new moon, you know, planning for the next 28 days, this upcoming lunar cycle. Um, Again, part of our standard intro here. This is something we've done for years. Uh, You know, it's, it's a fun way to honor the energies of, you know, the planets, the, the movement, the motions of the earth and the moon. And just as the moon affects, you know, the tides of the ocean, you have to assume that it has some kind of effect on us. And, and even if this is outside of your, you know, model of the world and you don't believe in, you know, the energetic influences, it's just another fun way besides following the, you know, standard Gregorian calendar, that, uh, you know, every 28 days, it's the start of a new cycle. And uh, so, yeah, um, as as part of this, each new moon, you know, has its own, each lunar cycle has its own theme, generally based around the, um, you know, astrological calendar. Um, So we love to look at that, draw some inspiration for that, um, but also give a little of the inevitable you spin on it, pull from our own intuition. Uh, We'll pull some tarot cards as another uh, form of inspiration to see, you know, what what should we be paying attention to as far as setting our intentions? You know, what are the potential changes that might come up in the next 28 days? How do we best deal with that? So, um, yeah, anything else you'd add to that, Issa? No, I think you uh, hit it perfectly on the head. We just use this as another uh, stepping stone and tool within the um, realm of the inevitable you and just giving another piece of vital information to ways that you can really set within ritual and be consistent. So it's been enjoyable and it's the last one of the year. So it's kind of the final uh, 2023 entering into a brand new year, which is really exciting, especially um, from the inevitable use perspective, we talk obviously a lot about what it means to have goals and resolutions, and it does fall in line a lot of times with what we talk about heavily within our um, new moon world here. Yep, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, exciting one because we're wrapping up the year, you know, finishing the year strong, preparing now for entering 2024, which you know, based on some things I was reading is we, we've got an interesting new moon here, a pretty exciting new moon, um, which we'll get, you know, we'll go into more detail here in a second, but officially December 12th, uh, 4.32 PM Mountain Standard Time or Daylight Time, whichever one we're in now. Um, and we've got a Mercury retrograde starting the day after. So some interesting energies at work. Um, but retrograde ends we've got the shadow period but officially ends on the first of the year so i found that really interesting um i'm sure we'll, we'll talk about what that means here but uh yeah what's what do we got in store what's the forecast yeah what's the forecast i wish i had like a green screen so i could uh show exactly what i have going on here um So yes, a couple of things to talk about that we'll discuss is the new moon itself. So this current one is in Sagittarius. So the new moon will always line up with just whatever that current month's main um, horoscope falls under. So each one cycles through. Uh, Sagittarius is a pretty cool sign. They all are. Um, This one is really going to be about this time to look at the future and ask yourself, what is the best that could happen? Um, It is a fire sign um, and Sagittarius is known to bring like joy, optimism, meaning. Um, It's really going to help us understand what we want. And then it's going to be really on this theme around expansion because Sagittarius is ruled by um, the planet Jupiter, which is going to be then linked to communication, which is then linked to this Mercury retrograde we're having, which falls underneath communication as well. Now, something to be aware of when it um, is in terms of talking about Sagittarius is they're very much about the collective. So like if you know Sagittarius is in your life, um, they tend to be very much about like what the bigger picture looks like. They're not individually small. So 
there's almost two sides to this particular new moon. Um, one that's going to be about really feeling ready to start something new. And then another that kind of clouds our path to start those actions, just because that's the fire side of that Sagittarius. Um, there's this urgency to want to act and be very bold and kind of take that free spirited step. And there's nothing wrong with it. It's just taking everything that we've talked about and all these past new moons and really sealing it in, right? Like there is something maybe said about we're still really in this deep hibernation period and it being that it's winter time. So being in that deep hibernation is where we're really in this inner inner world um, where we're taking a lot of visualizations, dreaming, seeing the future, seeing that bigger picture, which is where the Sagittarius energy comes in. And really taking all the excitement that you feel about it and hoping for what's to come. Um, the biggest thing to know is you may not have all the answers and that's okay. You're going to get a lot of answers within the new year, especially since we usher into another sign, which is Capricorn. Um, and right now it's really about just nourishing and nurturing yourself. So again, hibernation, what happens if we talk about an animal that hibernates, they go into resting, they've collected everything they need and they are really trying to get into the internal side so that they're really set on how to take care of themselves. Because at the very end of it all, if you're not taking care of yourself, then nothing is going to necessarily be easy. And that's pretty much just the way to do it. Um, So it's really going to be about that envisionment. It's really about looking forward, manifesting, and then taking that expansive thought and sitting with it. And then being really truthful, right? There's going to be some reality checks, um, things that maybe no longer feel aligned with you, especially as we're talking about end of the year, starting with the new year. It's a new cycle. There's this new experience and finally saying yes to maybe some things that have scared you in the past. Now, all of that is going to essentially tune in and line up exactly with Mercury retrograde. So as Brian said, the Mercury retrograde starts the day after this new moon happens, Um, and then it takes us straight into the new year. And all that you really need to know with Mercury retrograde is that you might feel it and you might not feel it. Um, there's this up and down, um, in terms of especially communication. So they say during Mercury retrograde time, it's important not to like sign documents. It's not uncommon if like an ex or an old friend reaches out to you because it's almost that like pattern interruption that happens. And that's what Mercury retrograde does. You're like smooth sailing. And then all of a sudden you've got the doop doop and you're like, wait, what was that? And it's just a great almost test to be like, am I really set with what I've manifested and set into my intention at this point? Because those little bumps aren't going to steer you away from what you're truly wanting and truly needing. It's just almost the little test to give you that reminder. Um, Something I read and I really have sat with is just this saying that this is not a moon to wonder if your intentions will manifest. It's a moon to wonder when they will manifest. Um, And again, what Brian and I always prominently like to do within these new moons is really talk about how we kind of bring it out of that very spiritual ethereal side into this reality. And when we talk about what we do with the inevitable you, it is really about not if it happens, it's about when it happens and helping you create those patterns and those really beautiful thought processes into knowing that you have the ability to act bold and be very free spirited. Um, It's just all about, again, having those personal beliefs, setting the boundaries, and then being really, really okay with no matter what challenge comes your way. Um, Something to know about the Sagittarius signs, they can be very dogmatic, just meaning they're not afraid to give you exactly what their own opinions and beliefs are, not saying that they're incorrect. Um, They do it in a very respectful way. But if you're not used to that very headstrong and again, fire energy sign, you might find that this holiday is um, come with a little more of like that debate. Right. Um, and then just keeping it in mind that there's going to be some type of confusion, maybe a little setback ideas, projects, something along those lines that that Mercury retrograde is going to create some of that fuzziness for you. So the overall goal is going to be to do two things. One, 
really make sure that when you're setting your intentions, especially as this self-nurturing inward look is happening, you know that it's not if it happens, it's when it happens. And then the second thing is to really be okay with whatever bumps in the road come. Um, Take it with a grain of salt and ask yourself, was that bump in the road here to tell me to not continue moving forward? Or was it just the space to say, oh, look, there's something trying to steer me away from what I truly know that I need from the inner workings of my soul. And nothing is going to phase me because I am so clear on what I see in the future. Um, which then leads us right today is we're recording on the 11th. So today, the 11th, we have just a few weeks left of yet another year. And you have just a really amount of time to take a step back and again, continue to go inward. That's what happens in the winter season. So it's not uncommon to feel more of that big brain, like, whoa, what is happening moment because you are inward and you're not thinking about what do other people need? It's how can I support the people around me? Because I am so clear on how I support myself. Awesome. Um, great. Yeah. Pretty much hit it on the head on everything I was reading about. A um, couple thoughts. Uh, one on Mercury retrograde, like I know it kind of like there's a lot of jokes maybe out there and, you know, some people make fun of it. And yeah, sometimes you might feel it, sometimes you're not. Uh, how I typically experience it is with with communications. And that's both like the actual communication I'm having with people. Sometimes it's like, I think I said one thing, but they perceived it as another way. And so you can, things can just get lost in translation. And so I think it's just, it's not intended to be like, to scare you. It's just a, something to be aware of so that maybe you're more conscious on how you're communicating that maybe you need to state things a couple of times or make sure that you're paying attention to what you're saying. How can I best communicate this, you know, effectively and clearly Um, so that it's received the way that I want it to be. And then, uh, interestingly enough, like the other side of communications, I, I experience it. I know this is common too with, uh, technology, you know, with like your computer and your phone, some kind, sometimes things go kind of wonky and really it's, I don't think it's all that crazy when you think about it again, like you've got this planet, which is Mercury is it's a planet that's got a lot of metal, right. And mercury, right. That it's floating around. It's in between us and the sun. It's affecting, you know, magnetic. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, forces, right? Like it's, it's, it's gotta have some kind of effect on us. So yeah, I, I don't think it's all that crazy to think that it might affect our technology or satellites and and then, you know, energetically for us. So just wanted to add that. Those are my, go ahead. Which to add to that too, I know I had briefly mentioned, you know, they say like not to sign contracts or anything. Mm -hmm. Just know that anything that is happening up to this point, if you've already been having the pre-conversation around it, it isn't okay to do. It's just like, So like I use the example, if you were talking about buying a house and you've been looking at houses and you're getting ready to sign in a home and the signing date happens to fall out, let's say next week, don't panic. That's not saying you're doing anything wrong. That's the energy pre. It's more just saying that within that confinement of those windows, there is going to be a certain element. So maybe in that home situation, you have a glitch getting the signature because the document didn't load correctly. That's not the sign saying not to do it. It's just knowing there is a little bit more of that fuzziness. It's kind of, you know, when you're not that many of us listen to the radio anymore, right? But when you're driving your car and you have the radio on, if you go somewhere where maybe there's interference, the radio gets that static. That's essentially what Mercury retrograde does to us. And then the one other thing I was going to add to it as well, when we talk about it right now is just to be aware that Jupiter is actually retrograde right now, which Jupiter is that influence planetary ruler of Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. How want to go into this it's just important to know because it is a really grounded planet so it is okay that it is retrograde in the terms that it's going to help you feel really clear about your intentions because it's going to help keep you grounded while mercury is out here doing all this other chaos it's like this big big dichotomy of 
Mercury is kind of trying to create the fuzziness and Jupiter Jupiter's over here going like, nah, kid, I'm good. I've been grounded. I feel really firm. So like, let me know what you need. I am here for you. And that's where that Sagittarius energy really asks you to lean into is to not let the fuzz confuse you and instead just be like, hmm. I've been clear about this for a while because the intentions you're going to make with this new moon right now, let's be real. They're not new intentions that you just like woke up this morning and were like gung ho about, right? I think we right now are pretty clear about what we want and we're always evolving and working towards it. So it's really cool to see how the planets can then support us with how they're stationed and how they're going to show up for us in terms of an energy involvement, just like you'd mentioned with it being that kind of like magnetic field of sorts. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's just really cool to see how those then play into one another that when one planet goes retrograde, there maybe might be another planet that is already retrograde and it kind of makes the situation feel lighter or easier, or maybe they play and they fight and it makes it more difficult. In this instance, it's not that Jupiter being really planted and grounded is going to help us so that we don't get pulled out of what we really need this season, especially going into the new year because Mercury starts to have its own little chaotic want for communication change yeah and then the last thing i wanted to add with this is like i just think it's a an interesting kind of confluence um or synchronicity of events that are going on with mercury retrograde the end of the year as you mentioned typically a time like we're kind of like shutting down a little bit. We're going to hibernation. It's winter, right? Like even company, a lot of companies are like, you know, (laughs) we're just not going to work for the last few weeks of the year. And, uh, you know, gearing up for now the start of the year, I think it's a great time to be doing this type of work to get into this mindset of the keywords that I was pulling out of, um, this article was possibility, and optimism and exploration. And, you know, as you're doing that, I think sometimes you need to have this, I think you put it as reality check to see, okay, I, here's all these things that I want and a lot, and they're probably, they probably have been there for a long time or, or several new moons now, right. That are carrying over. How do I bring these into reality? How do I actually go about and manifest these? And I think, in when you're going inward so like this is a common theme with all new moons where it's thinning that veil to our subconscious and we're looking at how do we what how do we actually operate and what are the things that are limiting us could be an old story that we're telling as to it's like one of your dad's favorite quotes right the tony robbins the biggest reason we don't have the things we say that we want is the story we tell ourselves as to why we don't have it. So I think it's a great opportunity to look at what is the story I'm telling myself? Am I limiting myself by some goals that I've been setting? Like I had a really interesting conversation the other day, a friend of mine about, you know, smart goals. (laughs) One of the half empty consequences of setting a goal is that you do put a limit on yourself versus a more exploratory goal, which is like, how fast can I go? How high can I go? How far can I go? What, what is the potential that I have that I can explore with whatever this thing is that I, that I want. Um, And then I actually have from an article just speaking on it that says your visions to turn into reality, you must be willing to receive them. That means you are ready to change, willing to reach for your potential, and willing to let go of the old energies that weigh you down. Part of this work is rewriting stories that limit you. So it's like, it's truly just that. You can say the story all you want and then wonder why you don't get it. And then if you were to look down at the breakdown of what you're saying, you are creating the limiting belief for yourself instead of just allowing the space to usher in all that the universe wants to give to you, it's literally sitting on your doorstep saying, take it all, have it. Yeah. And you sit there and go, "Mm, but let me put in my story. So that's really what, you know, Brian and I here are constantly trying to put together is how can we help you find a step outside of what you've known to be true for your entire life? 
because there is other truths out there if you're willing to step outside of your limiting belief and find an unlimited belief. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, go about this process of rewriting a story. Like what would it look like if I were to tell a different story, not fake, not fake it till you make it, right? Like all the same data points of your life, but with a different perspective. And so, you know, that's, that's what we do with clients. Like how do we design a new empowering, you know, potentialized story that will help someone along this journey of bringing in these things that you're intending and and manifesting. And so um, as always, you know, feel free to reach out, send us a message. If you want help in that kind of process, that that's what we're here for. So um, awesome. Want to get into some cards? Yeah, absolutely. Um, If this is your first time joining us, we do always um, do just a card pull at the end of the calls. If you've been here with us before, um, Brian just mentioned it. If you'd like a further in-depth reading or more information of where to find stuff like this, you can always reach out to us. Um, I always, shocker, this is not new, bring my um, messages from the angels. Uh, It was Bill's favorite deck and his most used. So that's just kind of my... um, usher of him into our space yeah Mm. um so we've got layla Mm. uh spend spend time alone in nature meditating about your desires and intentions ask the angels to help you gain a positive perspective um we always joke that nope doesn't seem fitting at all. Doesn't really yeah. fall in line with what you should be doing right now. Um, and I can read further into it. I love this card just because there's something very um I wanna say childlike to our growl Layla. Like she has just this very um simple and easy look. Like it's not about anything else other than just that being with yourself moment, which I really love. Um, <clears throat> your life has been noisy lately and you need to escape into a place of natural tranquility. It is time for you to be alone in nature, even if it is just for a brief while. You don't need others' permissions to take care of your soul in this way. Simply plan your sojourn and then follow those on those plans. Once you are alone in nature, allow your mind to wander whether it wants to go. Notice your thoughts and feelings and maybe write them down. After a time, speak aloud or silent to the nature angels that surround you and ask them to clear your body and aura of any stress that you may have absorbed. Then meditate and pray about your desires and and intentions. Prayers are amplified by the power of nature and you'll feel very refreshed when you return home. Nice. Good stuff. You want to guess what deck I'm pulling from? Probably your Indigo Child. I was pondering that one, but I'm going with my go-to Ascended (laughs) Masters. You've done Indigo Child the last few times, so I just assumed we were sticking with it. Ascended Masters is great as well. Yes. uh, So I've got the Green Man retreat into nature. Mm -hmm. What? Something funny? Just another nature card. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean. And not healing, applicable at all. Green, right? Healing, you mm-hmm. know, retreat into nature. I mean, I find always a great place to quiet the noise, you know, get more in tune with yourself, um, with nature, you know. Uh, it's very nurturing, right, to the soul. And, yeah, we're in, at least here, winter time maybe that means snowboarding or playing more in the snow but if you're in florida maybe uh you have more warm weather to enjoy the nature but uh i mean it was only like 50 this morning that's kind of cold it was very warm today (laughs) we had to turn the heat on in our house you guys from afar can giggle and laugh at us but it was cold (laughs) So, uh, you've been indoors too long and you need a refreshing break from stressful conditions. No matter how busy you are, there's always time to pause for fresh air. This card comes to you today with a strong message for you to spend time alone outdoors. 
The healing effects of nature will revive your energy and outlook, and you'll return to home or work with new ideas and a fresh perspective. Think of your nature retreat as an investment that will yield yield huge dividends. Mm. So, yeah, again, not fitting at all. Um, but to my earlier point, you know, getting yourself into an environment that's going to allow a fresh perspective. Like if you're just, I don't know, at least for me, sometimes I, I do find myself spend too much time in my home office here. And if you're to maybe quote some Joe Dispenza, you know, get out of bed the same way, shower the same, wash the same armpit the same way and get in the car, drive to work the same way. Like you're, we're, we, we follow the same patterns, right? Like just habitually all day. So, you know, is it any wonder that we tell the same stories that we, you know, find ourselves locked in the same patterns um, and maybe just getting out in nature, changing your environment would be a great way to break the pattern and, and bring some new perspective in. So mm -hmm. cool. Yay. Anything else? I don't think so. Um, we say it once, we say it twice. If you have further questions, Brian and I are always here. Um, we're really passionate about what we do within all aspects of the, the inevitable you. Um, this being one for sure of just really um, building more of our collective and putting together that community of humans that can really talk about our limiting beliefs and be there to support one another as we're on a journey for change. Um, so if you have further questions or interested, please reach out to us, um, social media, email, via the website, whatever is easiest. Um, and just to stay well, be healthy and set those intentions. Know that you are worthy of receiving and getting everything that the universe has to provide and offer you. It wants to, um, and let some of that loving and positive energy really reflect upon you. And don't be afraid of Mercury retrograde. It's not that scary. Yes, well said. Uh, yeah, find uh, links in the description here to our socials, our website. Uh, again, like Issa said, reach out, send us a direct message. Whether it's just like a personal reading, um, you want you know help or perspective on intentions and goals that you're setting, uh, we'd we'll be ha happy to help any any of that process for you. So happy new moon. Thanks for watching or listening. And we'll see you January 11th, I think is what we said next new moon. And happy new year. Happy new year.